From Flow Motion Studios in Brooklyn, New York, it's Schmoozik with Yossi Zwei. Sponsored by Levim Art Gallery. This episode featuring Shulam Lemmer, Simcha Liner, and special guest Ellie Levin. And now, here is your host, Yossi Zwei. Hi, and welcome back to Schmoozik. We are here live at Flow Motion Studios and we have an amazing show for you. I want to start off by thanking all the fans who've been watching and sharing and commenting. I can't tell you about the amount of times I got stopped at Kosher Fest this year by people who watch the show. Also want to give a thanks to all of the websites that post our show. So shout out to, to COLI first and foremost, to Gruntig, to Voss is Nice. As you guys know, I started up actually uh, doing Voss is Nice videos before I became this. Anyways, our show today, it's all Lakewood, or at least 95% Lakewood. With me today are friends from Tom's River. My first guest is a recording artist that uh, started singing as part of the Sheer Choir. Eventually he came on himself. People started noticing, released a video of Chad Gadja, another one of Vina Malkenu. A year and a half ago, Decca Gold signed him up as an artist and he just released his first album under the label. Please welcome the one and only Sean Lammer. Thank you so much for having me. And my Pleasure second to be guest, here who you know, I hear you guys are neighbors over there, or, or at least semi-neighbors. My second guest released a song about eight years ago, back in 2011, composed, produced himself with some friends, didn't know what would happen. All of a sudden, the song blew up. He is a man that was made by the people. That's what I'm calling him, at least, because social media helped build up who he was. From there, he went on to release three solo albums, a couple of collection albums, He's been seen in concerts across the globe. Just released his fourth studio album, Kol HaKavod to Simcha Liner. I still don't know what I'm doing. Really? Kol HaKavod. Kol HaKavod. said it very well. I was wondering how long it would take. You beat him to it, but still, I think you had the better, uh, the better placement. I think it's just this Tom's River thing. So you guys could have probably even... Yeah, uh, you said Lakewood. It's Tom's River. I'm sorry. You guys could have carpooled together then, technically. Right? You could have made the interview in Tom's River. So I found uh, out that you guys have a few things in common. Dude. First off, you worked in marketing, and Simcha's known to be very good in marketing. You also have a degree, I think, in marketing, right? I do have a degree in marketing. See? And you're the youngest child, and he is almost the youngest child. He's one so kid. Are, are you the youngest child? No, I am the youngest, yeah. Oh, OK. One you, of the, you, you are respond you, with, like, I am? I was like, I was like you're still not sure. Are you almost like, the youngest? I'm the star. <laughs> I mean, for Simcha to say, sometimes I feel like I'm the youngest. I definitely don't feel like I'm the youngest. <laughs> so when you heard about a year and a half ago, when, when all that news went out and, and the webcast that uh, Shulam Lemmer gets signed by, signed by Decca Gold under Universal Music Group, but what was your first reaction? Well, I figured it was about time. Someone, oh, uh, oh no, not that you were signed. That's, no, I'm joking. That, that, uh, <laughs> that, um, that someone outside of our uh, circle recognized the talent that we have in our circle and it's just uh, pretty apparent that people are appreciating Shulam as they should. Interesting. Thank you. Did you, you guys... Was that good? Was that, I was just going to say, was that good? No, it was good. Did, I read, was the, did I read the lines uh, as you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you should have said a little more, but it was perfect. Wait, now, now you being a music fan, when's the first time Simcha came on your radar? I listened to his uh, Rachel... Uh, oh, so you listened said, to the original? Yeah, of song? course. I... Uh, yeah, should we test him, see if he knows? You know, I, I even... Let's, let's play the intro and see if he knows. I, I, I think, I know, I know thing too about Simcha. Simcha actually wanted to get into the Shir choir. That's true. He wanted to become a They needed a beard member. or the pace, what was it? He was no, so that was my competitive like he, advantage. Was, uh, yeah. I'll be the first Litvish in choir. affiliate. But I think that choir. was actually before my time. Could be. So I hear both of you guys the, have to come early to gigs. You to shave and you to do your pace. Uh, Yeah. I'm not early to, you have to prepare a little earlier. Give, give myself a little bit more Shulam time. so busy now that he just keeps his payas ready. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for good. to pull out like a case of like these payas that you got ready made, you just like, click it in. You think it's a joke, it's actually pretty, uh, it's tough work. Shave is a shave, you know. Oh yeah, try, you have, as you I said, a bad try, try doing it on the BQE, you'll see in like one payas. <laughs> this is like, you know. <laughs> but shaving is shaving, you can't have a bad hair day. Pay is sometimes it just it just won't work. You gotta go up on stage and you and become you know, a, a Belzer Chusid. Right? <laughs> put it up all the way. Right? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I am a Belzer Chusid. So you've no. been traveling a lot, <laughs> Shalom. Think about it. You didn't know he's a Belzer Chusid. I did. He lives in Tom's River. Oh. 
So when we talked before, I, I know that <clears throat> you didn't necessarily plan on going into music for a career. That's correct. I never, I mean, I always enjoyed music. I loved music and I admired singers, musicians and music. I never made specific plans or aspired to be, you know, this is what I want to be growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I grew up with Yankee. He was he's a great chazan. And he studied chazanas and he studied music while I was in yeshiva. So I got a lot of uh, help from that. And uh, yeah, just I got an opportunity, came here. See, after the Shmaya, an opportunity came there. It started when I was in yeshiva in Israel. Started with uh, Dudi Kalish. He helped me bring me to choirs, right. recorded choirs, and then from then on I went to Mona Rosenblum, Moishi Roth. I did so much, so many choirs with him, recordings. Al Chaim, Yosef Mishkahana, Brisk. I, you know, I was in, in Yeshiva and I did right. uh, a lot Everybody of choir else, work. They're in Yeshiva in Israel, but they spend most of the days. Sorry, Not most, most of the, the days, most studios. Of course, yeah, when nights. Uh, Ben Asdarm. That's why it says in uh, God Yigizman uh, Kriyashma. They, they were all in the studio. They weren't. <laughs> And then when I, uh, I came back here to, uh, to New York, I was, uh, it was just a few weeks, and I was like, yeah, the choir, why not join the Shira choir? Someone told me I should join. I was like, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. Why not? From then I started doing solos. People asked me to dab, and people, yeah, just one thing led to another, and this is the Shmaya. So there's no, like, there no really person in your life or anybody that inspired you to get involved in music, so to speak. My sister was very, I was very close with my sister. She... Uh, she tra tragically passed away in a car accident a few weeks after she got married. Um, but after, you know, I get asked a lot of why did you go into music? How did you get into music? Who inspired you to go into music? Obviously, growing up has a lot. Of, but then I, I was, it, I reminded myself that she was very supportive. I mean, she, she pushed me on the stage the first time at my brother's chasana. She... Always made sure I listened to this song, learn this song. I think I want you to sing this song. And I was young. I was eight, nine, ten, and uh, so she definitely has a. She definitely started my career, and I'm very grateful for her. And I hope that she's very proud of me right now. Well, it's a perfect dream. I better hope so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But you didn't have like any teachers, rebellion, <laughs> family, friends. Nobody else had wanted you or told you to go into music. I. I yeah, I, I got sometimes comments. I remember my teacher telling me by davening, oh, that was beautiful. You did that thing by davening. Was, and whatever, or by davening, I used to get sometimes the extra tickets for davening so loud and so nicely. And used to say, oh, wow, you're going to be a... For all the extra tickets. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be like, you're going to be a chazan about Like I Like, it was all like, really? Oh, yeah, thank you. I was never, but... And, and uh, you know, Hashem has his ways, makes things happen. That's my father... Listen to Chazanas a lot, and obviously, growing up, my teenage years, I listened. I um, listened to Yankee while he was studying Chazanas. Right. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. I listened to Chazanas, um, and I was I was already singing as a teenager. I sang at weddings, family uh, events, family simchas right. events, but I never like dreamed of actually, you know, being. A singer. I, let, I, I, let I, alone being. I, I, actually, you know what? I think. I, yeah, I actually I think it would. It was always on my mind that it would be a good thing, but I never did anything to... We were being pro proactive. Exactly. I was never proactive about it. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, putting it better. I, I, know there's, I know there's singers in your families. I have uh, one... Your uncle's about Tzvila or something. My uncle's about Tzvila. Yeah. He's been about Tzvila for 40 years. Um, I grew up going to his uh, Rosh Hashanah Kippur Davani in Fairlawn, New Jersey. He's still there. Um, to mirror what Shulam was saying... I don't think anyone grows up sort of uh, with a career path of becoming a full-time musician. You're not on Instagram often, are you? I see all these kids now, they get these microphones, Hanukkah time as a person. Uh, they sing there, when I grow up, I want to be a singer. Right, no, but that's a, that's a dream. It's a dream, it's a dream. It's a dream. right, it's, it's not a career path, path. exactly. Know? I think that's an um, important distinct, distinction. And I, I, someone recently asked me, um, I'm working on becoming a singer for a living, what do you recommend I do? Get I said, job. go to medical school. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's a, it's one of those things, and you should know. I, I, you know, in the beginning, approached this the same way that I went to school. Um, I have a master's in finance and marketing, and I had a, you know, real a reality check with my wife. We said we're going to give this 12 months, whichever one of the uh, career paths are more uh, lucrative, Vi viable. Yeah, that's what we'll pursue full time, and. Uh, Baruch was a pretty clear 
for me, it was a pretty clear uh, like decision. Nine years later, yeah. That's right. That's, uh, but uh, not, not everyone's lucky enough to have sort of a decision made for them. Right. So for anyone that, give it another year. Let me for anyone out there who's, who's you know, dabbling in it, there's something beautiful about not having it be your full-time job. Something very enjoyable. There are times that if you know that you're just singing because you want to sing, not because you have to sing. You know, to, to quote right. my, uh, my idol in this business, you know, is Avram Fried. He goes, I'd like to thank my parents for making this all possible. And he says, I'd like to thank my wife and children for making this necessary. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's the same That's sentiment true. that... Exactly. That if you have the schlus or you have the, the, the privilege of singing just because you want to sing, consider yourself lucky. I don't look at any day, you know, feeling unlucky or, or you know, I, I look at this as a privilege to be able to do something that you love as your, as your, you know, your livelihood. But at the same time, there's a lot of pressure that goes along with it. You know, you, you're weighing a decision, yes or no, should I do a job, should I not do a job? And there's this weight on your, on your shoulders of, is it financially viable for me to do the job or not? As opposed to, will I enjoy this job or will I not enjoy this job? Interesting. Now, your first yeah. single was the Cobra Rama song, which was, of course, done after a tragedy in Israel. Right. But what, what was it about that tragedy that made you want to do the song? Because that's it's something that I had to touch you personally because the song was a ver- it ended up being a very personal song. Sure. It's, it's almost 10 years now, I believe. Yeah. Wow. Um, the song was written as sort of my way to cope with a tragedy. And when you're in yeshiva, you know, when you hear of a tragedy, the hanhal usually gets up and wants everyone to find a fault in themselves. What did they do wrong? Or what, what, what did we do as a, as a community to deserve this? And to me, that's, some people do very well with that. But for me, I was like, this is what happened. This is what the, the, the way of God was to be. Mm-hmm. What can I do to either comfort myself or comfort other people? And you should know for a few years after Kal Barama came out, it was the international song of, of I wouldn't say mourning, but you know, an uplifting song in a time of tragedy. No, and Rav Nassim Tzvi Finkel was right. the Shiva of, of the Mir. The Shiva broke out, and I have videos of the Shiva singing this song in the middle of Seder when they got the news. So like stories like that, you know, and also people think that the song was an immediate hit, that it, was, it rose to the top of the charts, you know. It took a long time. Yeah, it took it, a you know, you look six back, to nine months, I think. Exactly. Yeah. You look back now and, like, you know, from, from the, in the grand scheme of things, things, you know, you have to be patient. 459,000 hits. I just checked today. You believe that? But you know something? Uh, think about it. That's low budget video. That's not so many Wait, production. that's not so many hits. <clears throat> It's nice. I'm saying it's there are, I have songs that are less well known that have three, right. four times the amount of hits. That but your songs it's not were about the hits. Produced in the studio, they were exactly. on an album. No. This was a yeah. let alone single. At it's a time about, when there wasn't that many. It's singles. about what touches people. It's about what you know yeah. people connect. Not everyone to. listens to music necessarily on YouTube, and sometimes people listen to it different ways. Some people even listen on Spotify. Did you know that? Of course. <laughs> so Shulam, yeah. I, I still can't believe this whole this whole deck of gold thing. I remember you know when it was announced. Um, how, how, like, if you can talk to yourself 10 years ago and give yourself advice saying, this is where you're going to be in 10 years, would, would you tell yourself to do anything different or just keep, keep going the path you're on? Medical school? Um, marketing, maybe? <laughs> Medical school. <laughs> <laughs> it's serious. a great question. Like I, like I said earlier, I, you don't, obviously, I didn't make a proactive plan. Right. And some of the things don't even come to mind. I actually did have... In back in the back of my mind, I had a dream, always like, well, you strive to be the best in whatever you do. Was it the perfect do. dream? It was the perfect okay. dream. Boom. I'm getting so, to color that. Color. I beat you. Color I'm getting color. to that. Yeah. There's always a dream for whatever industry you're in to strive to be the best. You have a certain job, you want to work, work for the best, you get to the top position. Or in the music, you know, you want to work with the most successful people, the best people, and obviously you want to get a record deal. That's like the highest thing. Thinking back, it was something not possibly, and I have limitations being from... But when this opportunity came, I was like, wow, it's, it's, it's something amazing. And obviously, there were uh, challenges that came up that was possible. And I'm so grateful that I was able to give, they were able to give me an opportunity with keeping true to who I am, myself. And uh, so, and that's the perfect dream oh, to be able to do what you love and be able to do, inspire people, not only, and, and going out beyond the, 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 not only the Hasidic community, beyond the Jewish community, and inspire people and educate them as who we are as, as a people, not necessarily 
Hasidish, and some people I'm Jewish, and some people are you know some people right. some people are, in, in in the Midwest they they just they just don't know and they're get inspired with music. Music music is a universal language, and it starts it, it bridges the gap and it starts a dialogue and it starts a connection and people say hey you know I want more information I'm interested and I see it now since the album came out uh, so many people from different backgrounds faiths religions like Christians and Muslims Walks even yeah they, all really? the, of course and they're interested and they enjoy it and they want to know more and they you know when are you coming to this state city this city it even Where inspired me to listen to Jewish music yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And it's funny they're saying you they, you inspired them because uh, only two tracks in the album are brand new to you. The other right, ones are, are covers. Correct. But I guess they're connecting to the way you're putting down the cover more than right. Heard about so some other. of them are not as known as the other right. ones, and uh, some of them are pretty like, classic, and they, and they haven't been listened to in a long time. Mm -hmm. And if you come up with a fresh arrangement and fresh, everything is fresh, then you start paying more attention to the lyrics or make, paying more attention to the music and. It has a different effect on you. Now, we had this discussion earlier, and I don't know if you're going to agree, but he told me this album was not geared towards Jewish people. Correct. You heard the album? I did hear the album. This is your wife, your children, the little liner twins, it's geared the other towards kids. people. Oh, okay. exactly. Okay. That's a, music is, a, I'll, I'll give you a, 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 an example. We, Recently did a, a show in South Florida. Mm -hmm. We have a couple more coming up there now in the winter because I, my rates are much cheaper in the winter to go to Florida than they are <laughs> to go to Chicago. No, um, and I just remember getting an email. Are you looking for an opening act I'm in the winter? I'm in, yeah. <laughs> Something tells me you're going to be on a cruise somewhere. Like a, <laughs> so the, uh, That's why maybe the cruise is in Alaska and he wants to go to Florida. Bahamas, actually. Oh. <laughs> There's a cruise now to Antarctica. Really? Yeah, Dan's deals, let's go. <laughs> so there's a, a group of people that reached out to me via email saying they wanted to know if I'm going to have a screen there by my show, like a, a screen behind the stage. I said, yes. Um, why do you ask? They said, would you mind if one of us um, consults with you beforehand to translate all of your music? Because we're a, there's a big Mormon population really? that is very inspired by your music. It's all biblical yeah. and text-based. They want to come to the show as a group, but they want to make sure that their kids understand what uh, I'm singing about. Right. So we're putting the, the lyrics on the screen in multiple languages. And wow. Yeah. Music is music. If it inspires exactly. you, you accomplish what you set out to do. But, I mean, you're not even... Pan, I don't want to say panhandling. You're not even marketing. You're not even gearing your advertisements. Or I mean, they have to go into a Judaica store unless they're on iTunes or Amazon. Well, they discovered or through YouTube right. Or, right. Or, right. Exactly. or Instagram. You know, the, my, I, I, as a marketing background, right. I, analytics are the most. You know, it's like it's like fun. It's key. fun for us. You know, the, like the marketing junkies, and I see exactly where people are located across the country, and you'd be surprised to see where you know they're. It would it would pleasantly surprise you to see where you know the fan base. Music is, is being played. Uh, you've been doing. And to go bass, back, yes, sorry, you, to go back to what you were saying about the album. So <clears throat> a lot of people ask the follow up question. So are you coming out with another you know, Re religious Neil album? album. Well, exactly. Yes, the answer is of Heimish course. Album. Heimish album. The answer is of course. We're working on it. You know. So the, the label doesn't already. have a say in your. That's a different discussion. Oh, it's a different discussion. <laughs> in general, we're working towards that. Of course, mm -hmm. I was given an opportunity. That you know, obviously, we're discussing with the Rabbanim and family and stuff how we can do it in the best possible way, and if we should do it, it's an it's an additional opportunity for me to do music and to give it a broader voice and a broader audience to reach to uh, a much bigger audience. Uh, but we're going to continue doing what we did till now. It's a shame when working on that that album. So, like he said, it's catered, it's catered to people, mm -hmm. not necessarily towards them or not to them, but I'm not, obviously I'm not gonna, you know, I understand there's some sensitivities to some people that listen to that, the, the first album are not gonna want their, their children to listen to this because at the end of it, and that's why I'm not, you know, specifically um, selling it to them like I sell the other album. Right. Of course, I'm only singing songs that make sense for me as a Hasidic person. And, uh, There's a lot yeah, of like research, that, not of course, love songs, every, and not certain course, styles of All those of kind of things, every, every song, all the lyrics, and the, trend, and the new songs, how when we wrote it, the sensitivities of 
if it could be translated in different ways, like a dinner, you know, just make sure everything is covered in that way. Um, and I have, you know, multiple rabbanim that I ask. It goes through the whole entire process. And, of course, it makes sense. So, yeah, once we, we worked on that, but the album is out, and whoever uh, wants to listen to it is willing to listen to it. It's available where music is generally available. But we're working on another Hasidish album, uh, Heimish album, I guess. Heimish album. Hopefully to be Inzira music. Inzira music. Inzira. Inzira. I'm saying it like a liquid or not like uh, Thomas River. So it would be Unzir. Uh-huh. Yeah. Tom so Zimmer? you've been... You say Inzir? Inzir, yeah. yeah. Oh, so you've been traveling now. You've done the, the baseball games, the, the, the national anthem, mm-hmm. and you've had a bunch of different shows obviously set up, uh, like Arlene's Grocery and the show you had in the city this week. I mean... Right. Last week. When somebody, last week. When somebody who you see, you know, comes over to you has no shaykhs to Judaism or whatnot. I mean, is that like is that making you apprehensive now? Now that you're you know you're like an authority figure, you're somebody somebody might look up to that's not from our world. Like, do you have to behave a certain way? Do you have to explain our customs to them? As far as there's definitely that responsibility. Yeah, I, I mean, I think every person has a responsibility. When we were in yeshiva, we said, you know, people know who you are because not because they know who you are. You represent a certain people. So you always have a responsibility to act a certain way. Right. Um, so, but when people do know who you are and people you're in the spotlight, you have a bigger responsibility to, and especially like you said, you represent the Jewish people to people that never necessarily um, bumped into a front person or Jewish you person. Realize so, someone can never cut anyone in line ever again. Like did anywhere. you see? With me, right? like in Lakewood, I can't cut anyone in line. <laughs> like if I'm in a grocery shop right somewhere in you know, Jackson, Whatever, we're all together pulled into one group. Did you see his Instagram this week? Possibly. He was buying yeah. shoes. Were you in, you're in the city somewhere. Yeah, I was in the city, in Saks. Saks. I wasn't buying, buying, I was looking. Oh, Please. sorry. I was not. Sorry. I'm not. <laughs> he was looking to possibly buy shoes. <laughs> I was spending the day, and uh, the salesperson in Saks comes up, Shulam? Yeah. He's like, oh, I, I'm such a big fan. I came to your show in you know, the JCC and uh, I follow your music. I'm like, wow, I didn't think it was you. And, you yeah, know, 100%. It's humbling. And it's so just, for both of you, has that become troublesome at some point, getting recognized a lot? Only if there's alcohol involved. <laughs> I'm not joking. If the person that, to me, there are, there, over the years, there, there were other people in our industry who seemed visibly frustrated when someone came over for pictures or you know, today with social media, you can't go anywhere without being stopped on the streets or whatever, being asked for a picture. Right. Usually it's me, them asked to say, me to take a picture of them because I don't know what about no. So the, uh, they were being visibly frustrated. I said, you worked so hard to reach a point where people would want to take a picture with you. Right. You know, re- reward them as a thank you for you know, helping you achieve what you've achieved. That's a so, great perspective. And of course, yeah, it's... Uh, look, there's got to be times when you're out with your family. So, so that's what I was saying. So I was around the corner here by a, a, a certain food establishment in this area that has two floors. And the upstairs <laughs> is a balcony. And when you're eating dinner with, out with your wife um, in said establishment, that's not 5 or $10 for a burger, you know, you expect to have a little bit of privacy and you expect people to... to you know, um, respect your privacy. But when yeah. someone upstairs screams out, hey, it's my wife's birthday. Sim Liner is going to sing her happy birthday now, you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clearly some other influence was involved here. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that maybe is where uh, the, the line is drawn, you know? So, yeah, I look, it's, it's has its, it's uh, everything has its pros and cons. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. When you're out and you want your peace and quiet or when, you know, you don't want your family to be, uh, you know, bombarded or in the spotlight or you just want, you want, you want to be yourself right. for a change. It's interesting but, because Shulam and I both have a very similar, um, like, uh, ground rules. I thought you were going to say you look similar or you have a similar oh, car exactly. or something yeah. else. I'm yeah. Sure yeah. Going. Well, Tom's River, yeah. marketing. Same initials. A, same initials. Right. That's a good one. Even that, yeah. yeah. So um, the, when it comes to drawing the line, also a, a clearly defined line is, is getting your family involved. Right. And both of us, if you ever look at our Instagram pages, as far as I remember, we had this discussion a yeah, couple yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You, you will not. The kids on one, no, I think. No, 
you might hear them, but you'll never see them. Yeah. You have twins and one other child, right? right? And you? I have three children. Can I know? No twins involved. Uh, and that's so much yeah. alike. What are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, it's like I said, you, it's at the end of the day, people forget. They, they look at you, and, and it's, it's very humbling to see that, that they look up to you as a role model, as an idol. Mm -hmm. And they can possibly forget that behind this is a normal human being, a normal person that does the same thing that you do. You know, you wake up in the morning, you go to and you learn, you have a family, you go to the grocery and- Brush your teeth. Yeah, it's- Take out the garbage. Of course. And some people, it, it takes a second to register, but like I said, it's, it's rewarding and it's humbling to actually, to, pe to see people have, uh, come over to you and, and it's, uh, so I think it's, it's, the pros are more than the cons. Yeah, it's uncomfortable sometimes, but it's- You it's, see that? Hey. Oh we God. just walked you, you, in. We saw the, the secret here, you? the secret of this episode. You see, what? that's the yeah. secret. What's going on, guys? How you the doing? The secret of this been? episode you? To was to, bro, <laughs> to, to be strictly, uh, good to see it. Sure wow. Strictly yeah, well, yeah, we got it. <laughs> It's a good time. Wow. Have a seat, Ellie. I'm getting there. Hi, how are you? Ellie Le Okay, Ellie so we got Liner 11 Lambert. Wait, is that Today's even in alphabetical order or not? Right. Yes. L-E's. Only uh, L-E. Wait one second. Oh. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right. We, we got Ellie with the L-E's. Ellie with the L-E's. L-E. Oh, I like that. Marketing. I like that. Okay, yeah, that's how we do it. Hashtag marketing. <laughs> What's up, Ellie? It's so oh, yeah. good to be here. It's really, really cool. I heard, you know, uh, Zevi called me, let me know that there was something going on. I, I'm always up for surprising a good couple, a good Yudin. So I'm here. I'm actually glad that I'm getting to see Sholem today because I know he celebrated his record yesterday, last night. There was yeah. an awesome party in Tom's River, and I wanted to come. Didn't make it, but Next congratulations. Time congratulations. Really, the Grammy really party, Nitsushim. Yes. <laughs> she eats his baby. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Only. <laughs> Well, is that, wait, does that mean you got the nominations? Right, the Grammys? No, the nominations? So now I just came out yesterday. He is a professional so. digger. I, I, I know that like he's going to get Zeddy? every... By the way, I'm yeah. just striving for being something special like <laughs> exactly. Grammy. No, no, I actually no, just um, I just recorded a theme song for a movie that's coming out about the Holocaust. No, uh, really? And I just recorded wow. it. And it was last week it was submitted to uh, be nominated for an Oscar. So... Uh, by the way, when did the Oscars are what, in January? Yeah, uh, the film is actually premiering Who's in Oscar? January. Who's <laughs> Oscar? He has a lot of good questions. Too. I was going to say, he's the Oscar tall guy. Everyone's every name yeah, dropping. I don't know any of these people. Zevi, Oscar, <laughs> my Grammy's here. I don't know. Yeah, you That's your that. grandmother. Oh, okay, fine. I, I wanted to take an opportunity to sing with these two awesome Eden. Oh, wow. And you just happen to have had a guitar. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I like every good musician, he doesn't leave home without it. Got it. Yeah, Maybe I can. We can we could I can't leave without it. What do you say? Shulam Simcha. Beauty. Simcha is this guy. Go ahead. Oh, we both recorded Nafshi. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I think you did. Nafshi. Chomda. Join me, Chabda. Chomda. Bitsenu. Dechu.
I heard you last time going for the major. I was gonna yeah. like. Yeah, I was with this look what you're gonna nice. do. Very nice, very nice. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much. Right. So nice to meet Maybe you. Maybe Lipa's outside. Thank you. Because, uh, oh, wow. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you for stopping in. Such a pleasure. Enjoy the L's. The L's. We have something new going on here for everybody that subscribes to our channel. And all the new subscribers for the next 10 days, once this show airs, they're going to be entered into a drawing. They can win a $360 gift certificate to the Levine Art Gallery Boom. right here in Crown Heights. You've been Beautiful. there. I've been there. there. I've been there too. Been there too. It's amazing. It's I was actually there too. Um, it's an amazing place to be. And if you mention the word music there, they treat you a whole lot better. Yeah, really? they enjoy music. They love music they love over music. there. Keep, uh, keep visiting. <laughs> They have Levine a wide variety of different types of Just arts. Just look at the name, yeah, Levium nice. Art Gallery. With two eyes. And talking about the Levium. Yeah. yeah. Um, Simcha, I know, just released a brand new album, Kol Kavod. He's doing a Kol Kavod tour. Mm -hmm. We're going to hear about that. But is, is, is there, is there a, a, a Perfect Dream tour? Uh, of course, definitely. Or is the Perfect Dream tour both of you going together? Or? Wouldn't that be the Perfect Dream? Well, maybe if I send Decca Gold a video of you three singing that uh, Nafshi, maybe. Uh -oh. Maybe. The L tour. Simcha. <laughs> I'm taking we'll the, take L. the L train. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, definitely. We're doing, uh, I just did a show in the city. I'm doing going to Boston next week. And they have shows across, uh, you know, it's, it works differently with, uh, in the corporate world, as they say, with different agencies. And it's. Uh, he, he can do whatever he wants. He doesn't have yeah, anybody to answer. The way, no, no, the way it's, it's uh, different agencies and different things. But we're very, I'm very excited. We're working on some amazing things, amazing dates and amazing places, amazing cities. Uh, so I'm ex very excited about it because that's where you interact with the people and people get to know you on a personal level right. and you get to see the fans and hear their stories and connect with them. So, so like I'm after a show, you stick around? And are you doing the same thing? After the show, you're going to stick around and talk to people, take pictures, or is it back to the so, airport so to get to the next a, location? It depends on the, on the city. Mm -hmm. right. so the Kalakavod tour, which we're currently on, um, because we're filming this two weeks before the Color Tour starts, That's right, but yeah. the video will probably likely be seen while we're on Color Is uh, coming to 22 cities around the world. Um, 14 cities are already what we're calling phase one. Mm -hmm. um, the tickets are already available for sale on simcholina.com slash tour. You can see all 14 cities already, um, time, date, location. Um, the show is unique. I think someone mentioned to me this is the first real Jewish tour ever. You know, it's true, probably. Wait, wait. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about when people have two shows in a month and they call it the no, no, no. I, so and so <laughs> tour. I grew up in Montreal. I went to Yeshiva in Toronto. You know, I mean, whenever people, when people say tour, they like to say tour, and then it's like concerts in California, New York, Miami. Right. That happens to but be in the, the same. Cities, that happens to be in the same like, calendar year. Right. Right. You know, this is a tour means going from city to city. There could be five, six cities in so a give row. Me, give me examples to, of city, small sure. cities that probably never small have cities, concerts. Denver, Philadelphia, really? Silver Spring, Boca. Um, we have Johannesburg, London, Beit Shemesh, Johannesburg. Montreal, yeah, Toronto, Los oh. Angeles, Chicago. I mean, the list is all online, but the dates. And yeah, I've been to many of these cities for not necessarily tours, but to appearances mm -hmm. for dinner fundraising. Stuff. There is a big need and a big, people want to hear music and people want to hear Jewish music. If there's a show, I think you're doing an incredible thing. You're giving the people what they want and it's. It's, uh, I would have killed great. for something like that growing up. You know what it's like waiting like every five years till your meal begun came? Right, right. Or, yeah. or if, I've read what happened to at a wedding The difference or between a tour, you know, in the corporate world, like which is the way I modeled this tour, right. and a from-style tour is that a from-style tour is like if there's a yeshiva that's making a dinner, bringing in a singer, and then another, you know, Hatzalah is making a dinner in Toronto, and right. they call that a tour. That's not mm. a tour. A tour is when right. the singer or the, the label or the people behind me are investing in a tour. We are covering the costs of the tour ourselves. Um, and yeah. that is, you know, so this is go big or I, go home. Exactly. And I think you're setting an example, and I think, you're, I think it should be uh, something that, Become a standard. No, Tom's music. Tour. Stop. You're Tom's right. Tour. Yeah, of yeah. course. I mean, like I said, I'm working on something similar, and uh, I think it's the way to go. That's because people want you want to hear the music, and people want to meet the person. And, right. And uh, you see it because uh, when you have appearances like a dinner or a fundraiser, like you mentioned, half of the young, uh, half of the teenagers come, or half of the not even teenagers, everyone they just come because of the of. Uh, of the act, and that just shows how much uh, big of demand they want to 
There is. It's, it's, it's usually a huge right investment there. also. Like for the past six weeks, I've been working with a team to build a show. In the non-Jewish world, this is commonplace and standard. Right. We have a rehearsal facility. The entire show is built out. It's pre, it's, nothing is on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, there's audio, visual, right? There's video that is matching to the music the entire show. There's um, But you material. only see it like a Haskon. No, most other shows don't even do that. Right, and just the biggest shows in Israel, it's, it's much more common, but here um, it's, it's almost unheard of. Even the small cities are gonna have the screen with the, with the visuals. Um, and the concert, the music, it's all new, it's from scratch. These are songs that they'll, people will know. You know, my, my collection of albums, thank God, now is up to eight. Right. So between there's the originals between the, and the four originals right. and four right. um, co compilation albums. So there's a lot of material to build from, but every single song was stripped down, started from scratch. New arrangements, new uh, shticks in the song. We used some really cool. We went, uh, spent a day in Manhattan recording, sampling sounds from around the city to build out a, you know sound effects and drum kits for the show. And it's a, it's a real, real production that will uh, All be I gotta say is city. one word, telecovered. <laughs> if there's a hashtag, it's one word. Otherwise, it's two. Oh, that's true. <laughs> and that he's gonna say, nah, it's the perfect <laughs> dream. But no, you didn't you, you <laughs> there. There's only so many times that I can, uh, you know. So Sean, you don't play yeah. any instruments, do you? Uh, depends what you consider playing. There's the bima. Um, I'm not talking about the dining room table when he sings. No, mass. but playing, yeah, I play very basic drums, basic piano, really? basic guitar. I can accompany myself if I need to. Now but you, I, you, I, but know. I know what playing is, and I don't consider myself. So being the difference is that I learned how to fake well. Mm. You have to learn how to fake. Yeah, an can, can we well. see? Can we see good faking? Sure. Is the keyboard that was in my trunk happened to show up magically on set? I think it might show up. Ready? We're gonna one, two. Oh. There we go. Wow, look wow. at that. Okay, what are we doing? Uh, is this going to be part of the show, this? What, Shulam's going to appear on stage with me? Hey, we, hey look, this Shulam. What are we doing? Are we, are music, we... schmoozing? Sh we're schmoozing music. We're schmoozing music. So we did the schmoozing, and now we're doing the music? Yeah. Wait, wait do I have to call Decca and sign a, a release before I get you to sing on camera? Don't mention it, you might. <laughs> Good thing this isn't going on YouTube. Oh, good thing. <laughs> Only Vimeo, right? You fake play really well. The rabbi's usually speaking. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> if the shul is singing this song, the rabbi's the probably rabbi speaking now. <laughs> I think you fake play really well. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to match up. I wonder I've been faking for many years. Oh, yeah. yeah. First of all, I want to thank both of you. I know you both have busy schedules. You have a gig tonight, and you yeah. also, also have a gig. Also have a gig. Baruch Hashem. And I'm just I had a gig when we filmed this. Yeah. 
Thank you for watching our latest episode of Schmusic filmed live right here at Flow Motion Studios. If you would like to comment or let us know what you think of the episode, if you'd like to sponsor an episode, please send us an email, info at schmooze.live. And don't forget to subscribe below to our YouTube page, and we will see you on the next Schmusic right here. Thank you. Thank you. Schmooze.live. Follow us, subscribe, and share.